Hi everyone, are you ready for another awesome day of math? Me too, let's get to it. Today we're gonna to be doing a mixed review. So we're gonna be touching on many different concepts within the subject of math. The first concept that we are going to investigate is that of measurement. So you can see up here with number one that we have uh, a paintbrush and we have to figure out how long this paintbrush is. First thing we need to do is make sure that the object, in this case the paintbrush, is starting at the zero mark on the ruler. And here we can see, okay, it is. Otherwise we might have to do some subtraction, but in this case we don't have to do that. Now, best thing to do here is find a straight edge and put that on your paper or on your iPad. You can see that this is gonna come right up to that 13 centimeter mark there. So let's go ahead and write 13 in here. And that was easy. Let's take a look at number two. All right, number two, uh, two part question for number two. Uh, first part reads 57 is the numerator and 87 is the denominator. All we have to do is put the number in the right place, and you guys and gals are all pros at this and can do this no problem at this point. Numerator, number at the top is going to be your 57. And denominator, remember the D in denominator represents the down number. In that case, it's going to be 87. All right, we'll do the second part of number two together as well. And it reads 66 is the numerator and 97 is the denominator. So we'll go ahead and put that in there. All right, 66 is my numerator, the number up top. And denominator, D in denominator for the down number. The uh, number down there is going to be 97, right? Oh, boy, this is too easy. We need something more challenging. Oh, finally, we have a complete the sequence. So whenever you have a problem that's asking you to figure out what the pattern is, all you have to do is ask yourself, okay, are the numbers getting larger or smaller? And our numbers here are increasing in value, 15 to 18, 18 to 21. So that means that we are dealing with either addition or multiplication. That's either addition or uh, multiplication if the numbers are increasing. So let's see. 15 and 18, the difference there is going to be 3. If I add 15 to 3, I get 18. Let's do that. 15 plus 3 gives me 18. Now, let's see if this pattern holds true. I'm going to add 3 to 18 to see if I get 21. Eight plus three is gonna give me 11. I'll carry the one. One plus one is two, and look at that. So we have broke broken the code. Way to go, everybody. Now, all we need to do is add three to 21 and find out what our next number is. Well, three plus one is going to give me four. I'll bring down the two. All right. So I am going to use 24 as my next number. And now we're just going to add three to 24 to find out what our final missing value is. 
4 plus 3 is going to give me 7. I bring down the 2. So I have 27 as my last number. Okay. Moving right along, we're going to check out number 4 here. Write the fraction for the shaded part. All right. Well, there's only one shaded part. We've, that was easy to figure out, but now I've got to find out how many parts there are in this hole. So let's count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So my denominator is going to be ten. And we've already identified what our numerator is. There's only one triangle shaded here so it's going to be one tenth numerator is one denominator is ten all right number five here let's look at this all oh, right it's a money finance question how much money is pictured below let's start with the dollars i've got Let's use green since we're talking about greenbacks. One, two, three. So I'm going to have three dollars. I'm going to go ahead and put that in right now. We might have to change that later. And I'm also going to put a decimal point in right here. All right, now come up. Let's take a look at our change. Uh, so I've got three quarters. A quarter is going to be 25 cents. So different ways to solve this uh, or to compute this. I could multiply 25 times 3. Or I could add 25 three times. I'm just going to multiply 25 times 3. Let's do that. Uh, 3 times 5 is 15. So I'm going to put a 5 here. I'm going to carry the 1. 3 times 2 is 6. Plus 1 is going to give me 75. You might have even already knew that. That 3 uh, quarters gives you 75 cents. But we're not done yet here. Uh, we have uh, 3 dimes. And what we're going to do is we're going to count by 10s starting with 75. Okay, so I'm going to start. I'm counting by 10s. Oh, I erased that. I thought maybe that would just highlight that answer. No worries. I'll just put that back in there. That's kind of what I was going for. Anyway, uh, so starting with the 75, we're going to count by tens. And how many uh, tens are we going to add? We're going to add three because I have three dimes. So 75, 85, 95, 105. All right. So we are going to be changing our dollar amount down here because we started out with $3 when we just counted the bills. But that changed, didn't it? When we, it changed when we added the change. Oh, that's so clever. Okay, um, when we add all of our coins together, we get a dollar and five cents. So now I'm going to add my cash plus my change, and we will get 5 plus 0 is going to be 5. 0 plus 0 is 0. Don't forget your decimal point. That's super important. And 3 plus 1 is going to give me 4. So we arrive at the answer, $4.05. And we'll put that in red here. I'll circle it anyway in red. That is our answer. Yay! All right. Um, write the correct number in each blank. They give me the number 672, and you really have to just be able to determine what number goes in what place value for this. I like to start at the, on the right-hand side with a problem like this because I know that this number is always going to be, in this case, it's the 2. The 2 is represented by the 1s. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm just going to put a 2 in my 1s. Uh, place value and then moving to the left the next place value is going to be this uh, where the seven is is going to be the tens and so I come over here and just put the ten right here and last but not least is going to be the six which is in the hundreds place value if you ever get stuck with a problem like this I suggest just saying the number out loud that should trigger your 
um, memory and you'll know where uh, where to go from that. So if you say 672 out loud, okay, you've just identified where the hundreds uh, digit is located, right? And then it's a lot easier to go from there. Let's look at the second page. And we are starting up here uh, with a word problem. The height of a building is 368 feet. Okay, that's pretty high. Uh, round the height of the building to the nearest tens place. Oh, good, another place value question. We just tackled one of these, so I know you're ready to answer this one. I've got the number 368. And they would like us to round to the nearest tens place. I'm going to highlight that because that's important, right? So I have to identify what number is in the tens place. That's going to be the six. So I look to the right of the six. I looked to the right to the six and look, I've got a number eight. And you remember, I hope you remember, the the saying the um, that helps you to remember this. It's a mnemonic device, is what they call it. But if it's five or above, you give it a shove. So you push that number up higher, shove it up. So this is now going to be rounded to three hundred and seven seven. Now what happens to the eight? Well, we put a little uh, magic math dust on it. There goes the magic math dust. And that eight becomes a zero. All right, so your answer here would be 370 feet. Uh, disclaimer, there is no such thing as magic math dust. I just made that up. And um, we just don't want anybody to try that in the future and find out it doesn't work. So I might as well just break the news to you now. All right, uh, number 27, is angle E larger or smaller than a right angle? All right, well, let's, a couple of things happening here. I've got angle E, I'm going to have to find that. And also, I'm going to compare that to a right angle. You'll remember that a right angle is 90 degrees. And so I'm going to use the frame uh, that this question is in to help me. This right here is a 90 degree angle. All right. Where this line and this line intersect, that creates a 90 degree angle. So now let's go on the hunt for angle E. And okay, there's angle E right here. The question is, is it smaller or larger? What do you think, Cooper? Cooper, that's not the right answer. But don't worry, you have another shot. Yes. Nice job, Cooper. Nice job. Angle E is actually smaller than a right angle, right? So it's an acute angle. And I guess we're just going to write the word smaller here. Smaller. All right. Last problem. Oh, thank goodness. I thought it was our last problem, and I was going to be a little bit sad about that, but there's another one after this. Um, a math book contains 405 pages. Let's highlight that, because that's important. Uh, rounded to the nearest hundreds place. How many pages does the math book contain? Oh, right, another rounding question. We need to know our place values for this. So I'm starting with 405 and they want us to round to the nearest hundred, so I have to identify where the hundreds digit is, and that's up here. Remember, if you say it out loud, that's always a, uh, a good way to kind of uh, find a reference for where each number is. And if I look to the right of the four, I've got a zero. And you're probably saying right now, four or below, let it go. You can't take it with you. So this is going to stay. Our new number is going to stay at four. In the hundreds place value, anyway, it's going to stay at four. And then this zero, this day is zero. And 
even though this magic math dust doesn't really exist, I'm going to use it anyway. That five is going to turn into a zero as well. All right, so you're left with 400 as your answer. All right, now, um, all good things must come to an end. And apparently, or um, at the end here, number 29, the cost of a single DVD is $5.95. And I uh, highlight that because that's probably going to be important. Probably need that to solve the problem. Estimate to the nearest whole number the cost of 15 DVDs. Oh my word, 15 of these things. All right, so let's do this. Let's get a calculator and multiply 15 times 595. We'll write that down and then we'll uh, estimate to the nearest whole number. Fifteen CDs and uh, a little advertisement here. We don't need that. Fifteen times the price of the CDs, which is five uh, ninety-five. Don't forget that decimal point, and you get eighty-nine dollars and twenty-five cents. Okay, so eighty-nine dollars and twenty-five cents. All right, now, I've got to identify the whole number in this problem. The whole number is going to come to the left of the decimal point right here. Okay, this is my whole number, the $89, because it's on the left-hand side of the decimal point. And I am now going to either round up or um, keep it or round down. And so I'm going to start with my 9 here, and I'm going to look to the right and what do we have? We have a two. Remember, four or below, let it go. Did you think I was gonna sing a let it go song? Nah. All right, so this is going to be estimated at $89 flat. A lot of money. 15 DVDs, I mean, that, that would be a, that'd be a lot of movie watching. All right, so coming over here, I guess we'll just write this down, $89. All right, guys and gals, have a fantastic weekend. Email me if you have any trouble, and I will talk to you on Monday.